Hey, welcome back. Or welcome if it's your first time to catch me crossing. I'm Sarah, aka Chic Geek, and I am just so excited to show you today's video, which is a very special tour that's very close to my heart. What we are doing is going to be touring my daughter's island, my daughter who inspired me to get Animal Crossing and really is why we are here today watching this video. So what I'm going to do is put on an outfit inspired by her mermaid themed island. And the reason we are touring today is because she, well, unfortunately, like many of us, she got burned out but she just couldn't get past the burnout to continue with her current island, her first island, which is emotional for me because it's the island where it all started and the island that made her love Animal Crossing. So today we're going to go tour her island of Sparkle and that is one of the reasons why she is restarting her island and not just flattening it. Um, she really does not like her name of Sparkle. I think like a lot of us, she didn't realize how important that name and permanent that that name would be. And also the island layout. She chose the same layout as me, which basically gives us no space between the airport and, um, why can I name, why can I not think of the name of that building? And anyways, you know, the big island <laughs> building. <laughs> where Isabel and Tom Nook are all the time. Resident services, that's it. Anyways, so we're going to go tour her island of Sparkle. It's a mermaid themed island, which is why I am in my mermaid gear. And let's go check it out. Now, while we wait for Orville to flap those wings that never reach the keyboard, if you could please subscribe to my channel and like this video. And if you could leave a comment about what you like about her island, that would just mean so much to me, and I know it will mean even more to her when she gets a chance to read your comments. Well, and here we are. We're at Sparkle. It's six in the morning, and can I just say how amazing that this island looks at this time of day? There's just something about 6 a.m this sky and especially a mermaid themed island it's like the morning sun the morning air is just like fresh and renewed and here's my daughter my mermaid princess daughter and we are in our matching dresses and I didn't even realize that I put the exact same dress she has on and the exact same shoes and the exact same back. But you know, hey, we are related. And just a little bit about my daughter. She is my oldest of two kids. I have two daughters and she is 10 years old. So she designed this island over the past um, year or so. She knew from the very beginning that she was going to do a mermaid themed island. And those of you who also have mermaid themed islands or even just collect the items know how hard it was for her to get all of these items. And so the first little area we're going to check out is her cute little outdoor open air market. And I just think she just did the cutest job with this. And she put a little microphone there in the hopes that some of her villagers would go and sing, and I think a couple actually did. I think it actually worked for her. And so over here is one of the other reasons why she decided to restart her island are the massive amounts of flowers. But I have to say, I just love a field of flowers. Okay, and so, ooh, gotta stop here. Hey, Raymond. So Raymond was one of her ultimate dreamies. 
so it's a little heartbreaking that she's going to be um, well basically sending him into the void because she's restarting her island so I definitely need to get a few selfies with Mr. Raymond so I make sure that we always remember him on Sparkle And I did forget to mention at the beginning that many parts of her island she started to tear down. Um, so it's not as amazing as it was at one point, but I really wanted to highlight some of the areas before she restarted her island. So let's run over here to her campsite which being a mermaid island, of course she had to put it on the beach and how perfect is it? And how perfect is that little butterfly just floating by? And I just love her use of the design codes on the sand there to me. They're just perfect. She's 10 people, I mean, I don't even think I could do it this well. Look at how awesome that is. Just taking a quick break on her pier here to look at that morning sunrise and I found another field of her dreaded flowers but how fun is this how fun would it be to run through a field of flowers like this I just think it's beautiful even though her flowers in the end just drove her crazy So we'll head on over here to Nook's Cranny where she changed this area many times but I love how she put the bunk beds and the simple panels above it to kind of expand it and this cute little flower stand and this is Abel's and how cool is her T-Rex placement I mean very cool in my opinion so let's head up this ramp to her land bridge here that leads to her museum. And I just think it turned out great. I love the waterfall placement. I love the T-Rex placement. And I love her little outdoor display market outside of the museum. Just, I just think she did a great job. forgot to show her island map so she's got Judy, Marshall, Julian, Raymond, Whitney, Audie, uh, Julia, Sherp, Marina, and Diana and Diana is a special villager and I will tell you later on in the video why she is so special on this island so let's check out some of the villager yards. This is Sherb, sweet little Sherb. He is just so cute, one of our faves, and I love that she made a little amusement park, kids tent, and sandbox outside of his house for him to play with. And next door is Audie's house, and up the hill is Raymond's house. Now, as you can see, his house doesn't exactly match her island, but she loved him so much, it just didn't matter to her. Now that I'm going in the right direction, let's head over to one of her secret beaches. I love the idea of building up cliffs along to make a path that looks super hidden and just makes the beach just feel so much more special and cozy. Okay, now we're gonna head over to her house on the island, which she created making this pretty big pond lake with a land bridge and dual ramps up to the main house. 
and I'm just so impressed by the way she was able to build her house and customize it with the silos and the simple panels and the fencing and the flowers and the waterfalls. So beautiful. I will definitely miss this house. So I ran the wrong direction again. So heading back up by her house, just behind her house, she created this secret garden. And at that time we were reading the book and I think we had just finished it and she just absolutely loved it. So she made a little secret garden of her own on her island. And I just saw a bug that I'm pretty sure I have not caught. Give me a minute here, people. Yes. Walking stick. Sweet. So back to the secret garden. This is it. I think she did a great job. And now heading around the corner from the secret garden is a little project that I helped her with. She wanted something back here. She wasn't sure what she wanted and I had seen some of these really cool ideas with waterfalls and butterfly gardens and so I helped build this for her and we just really loved how it turned out. Loved the little teddy bear there with her little seashell sweatshirt on or t-shirt on, the cake. I want to sit here. I would love to sit in front of that tent relax by the waterfalls and eat some of that delicious cake. Yes, please. outside area around her house so let's go check the inside and mind you she pretty much started redoing every room in this house so it's not as done as it was but I think the areas that she created are so sweet like this little seating area in her living room with all the mermaid items the candles I just think it looks wonderful and of course I have to mention the photos that she got. Judy's and Marshall's, she worked so hard to get those. And so they are proudly displayed on her wall. And I was so happy when she turned one of her rooms in her mermaid castle into a Nintendo gaming room. It just makes my heart so happy. Reminds me of my childhood. And as we come upstairs to her bedroom, uh, she didn't get a chance to finish it, but I just love where she was going with it. I love the Botticelli art on the wall. I love the posters. I love her little crafting area right there in the corner with her book. That is very much her. She loves to read, which I am so happy about. And she loves to do crafts. So definitely, is a great representation of her. And of course it wouldn't be a mermaid bedroom without all the beautiful mermaid dresses displayed. And as we head down to the basement in the final room that she had done in her home is, I guess it's like a little dormitory, right? I mean, how cool is this place? It's got your bed. Somebody's still moving in because of the boxes. We've got a desk with a journal that somebody's writing on, the beautiful kimono stand. We've got a microwave for cooking some microwave dinners and a delicious little cake that somebody dropped off. So, hey, you've got cake, you've got a microwave, you've got a little desk to write on. What else do you need? So that was it. That was Sparkle's Mermaid Mansion. And I'm going to miss it. 
so let's head on over here before I get too emotional about saying goodbye to her house. Let's look at this cool sushi restaurant that she created. Oh, hey, okay. Okay, wait. Okay, how did I not know that that actually spins? That's super cool. Okay, so let's head inside and check out this restaurant. And okay, first of all, we're gonna ignore the thing I just crushed because that's kind of unsanitary in a restaurant. But this is her sushi restaurant. And my daughter loves sushi, as do I. And I just think it's so cool that she put a sushi restaurant on her mermaid island. Although thinking about it, sushi on a mermaid island, not sure how to feel about that, but how impressive is this restaurant, guys? I mean, this was a lot of work. Now, as we run over to this next area, I wanted to point out this cute little design code she has on her beach. And this area is her little stargazing picnic area. And it's just so cute. I guess she deleted one of her custom design codes, but the blanket and the pillows and the pie pie, just so sweet. And this little area over here is her flower stand. And this area actually ties in with the next area, which is, well, it's actually not the next area. It's the very special area of her island that I said I would show you later on. But this is a flower stand. And I'll explain a little more about why it's so special a little later on. Now over here in the back left corner of her island on her rocks, she created a mermaid cafe. She m removed actually quite a bit of it, but I still think it looks great. And how awesome would it be to have a cafe on the rocks right next to the ocean? I think it's just perfect. I love this area. Now, if you follow me over here, this leads to her other secret beach. Well, it's actually not technically the secret beach, but it does lead to some rocks that make a perfect little lounge area, hideaway, and hey, why not have a little piano here where you can play the piano, eat some cake, read a magazine, and hop on a surfboard. And as we leave this area, I spot another local celebrity, so we have to stop and say hi to Marshall. Another one of my daughter's dreamies, and he brought her so much joy on this island. And that brings us to the special part of this tour that I've been telling you about. The part of my daughter's island that, in my opinion, is the most special part of her island. This is Diana's house. Now, the reason why Diana's house is so special is that she made this area in memory of her Nana. And February of 2020 was a really hard and sad month for us. It's the month her Nana, who was also her best friend, passed away. Her name was Diane, and we thought Diana reminds us of her Nana in so many ways. And so this is in honor of her Nana. The roses in the front yard, her Nana was an amazing gardener. She had a clothesline always with freshly washed clothes in her yard. She was a reader and so the book um, on the table there. Her Nana loved to read and yeah, so this represents her Nana and I just thought it was the sweetest thing. Now, the ring 
The ring is the most special part. Her Nana, after she passed away, as we were going through her things, she left a ring and tucked in the ring was a note. And in that note, she had handwritten that the ring was going to go to her first granddaughter, my daughter. So that ring will go to my daughter when she's older. So it's very special. Now her Nana had a black cat named Quinn. So the little garden party here with her cat Quinn, of course, had to be included. And farewell. For those of you who have Diana, the character, that is the song that is actually playing in her house, is Farewell. So another reason why we thought it just, it was perfect. So yeah, so that is Diana's house, aka Nana's house, and Nana's garden. And that's another reason why the flower stand was so special, because her Nana was a florist at one point. And like I mentioned earlier, she's, she was an amazing gardener and she loved flowers. And now it leads us to the final little special area here in Nana's house, AKA Diana. And as you can see, this represents her Nana. And she put the roses, the black roses. And yeah, I just thought she did such a beautiful job of honoring her Nana with such a beautiful area. And so that is it, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me on this, on my first island tour, but an island tour that means so much to me. It's so special. And I am, I'm emotional about saying goodbye to my daughter's island. I am so proud of her. I love what she did with it. If you could let me know in the comments which area was your favorite, I would love that. And I, and I know she'll love that once she can watch this video too. So thanks so much again for joining me. And let's run over here and let's say goodbye with my daughter because it is her island, it's her creation, and I think we should end this dancing it up together. So thank you so much for once again catching me and I'll catch you soon.